Dis despite this, it seems to have remained a secret. It is certainly not taught in churches and temples. If you go to a church, you may hear readings from the gospel. Gospel. Gospel, such as "Take no thought for the marrow, for the marrow shall take the take th thought take thought for these things for itself." Or nobody who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the king's dome of God. Kingdom. Dom, king, kingdom of oh, God. Kingdom of God. Or you might hear the passage about the beautiful flowers that they are not anxious. Yep. About tomorrow, but live, wait, yeah, live with ease in the timeless now. On provide for on de, on don't abundantly abundantly by God the debt uh, and radical mm -hmm. nature of these teachings are not recognized. No one seems to realize that they are meant to be lived and so bring about a profound inner transformation. 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 Let me get the next paragraph. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get me the whole essence of Zen consists in walking along the razor's edge of now. To be so utterly, so completely present that no problem, no suffering, nothing that is not who you are in your essence can survive in you. In the now, in the absence of time, all your problems dissolve. Suffering needs time. It cannot survive in the now. The great Zen master, Ren Rinzai, in order to take his students' attention away from time, would often raise his finger and slowly ask, what at this moment is lacking? A powerful question that does not require an answer on the level of the mind. It is designed to take your attention deeply into the now. A similar question in the Zen tradition is this, if not now, when? The now is also central to the teaching of Sufism, the mystical branch of Islam. Sufis have a saying, the Sufi is the son of time present, and Rumi, the great poet and teacher of Sufism, declares, past and future veil God from our sight. Burn up both of them with fire. Interesting, past and future veil God from our sight. Remember, the ego lives in the past and the present, right? So the ego cannot live, or I'm sorry, the ego lives in the past and the future. The ego cannot live in the present. He has to, in order for him to be alive, he has to focus on what has happened, why he feels the way or why she feels this way, or what could happen, right? Living in anxiety and anxious for what the future could bring, but not not doing anything in the present. And in this statement, past and future veil God. That means the past and the future put a blanket over God, like cover up God, cover God and hide him from us, from our sight. Burn up both of them with fire. Meister Eckhart, the 13th century spiritual teacher, summed it all up beautifully. Time is what keeps the light from reaching us. There is no greater obstacle to God than time. Go ahead and read Assessing, Accessing the Power of the Now. Accessing the Power of the Now. A moment ago when you talk about the eternal present and 
the unrelated. A little louder, please. Unreality unre of past. Yep, unreality. And future. I found myself looking at that tree outside the window. I have looked at it, at it a few times before, but this time it was different. The external perception, perception? Yep. had not changed much except the colors seemed brighter and more vibrant. Vibrant. Remember, vibrant. this is someone who's approached him and is talking to him about something that he said in the past. And so he's bringing this up. Accessing the power of the now. A moment ago, when you talked about the eternal present and the unreality of past and future, I found myself looking at the tree outside the window. I had looked at it a few times before, but this time it was different. The external perception had not changed much, except that the colors seemed brighter and more vibrant. Let me pause real quick. This is awesome. Because I'm uh, talking about this tree, he's going to start getting into like when you actually look, when you're looking at nature and, and, and you're seeing God in the moment, in the now. Um, one time I was at the gym and, you know, I was working out, whatever. I stopped between sets and I'm just sitting there. I'm looking at all the people in the gym. And this feeling came upon me where I realized that I was looking at God. All of these individuals who are connected to God, just like you and me and everything is, all of these individuals with their own problems and their own solutions, their own struggles that they're going through and their excitements and their wins for the day, right? All the people sitting here trying to work on getting better, getting healthier, being in conversation with other, other individuals. This is going to make a little more sense as we get further in here, but this is a cool section what he's about to get into. The external perception had not changed much except that the colors seemed brighter and more vibrant. But there was now an added dimension to it. Listen, this is hard to explain. I don't know how, but I was aware of something invisible that I felt was the essence of that tree. It's inner spirit, if you like. And somehow I was a part of that. I realize now that I hadn't truly seen the tree before, just a flat and dead image of it. When I look at the tree now, some of that awareness is still present, but I can feel it slipping away. You see, the experience is already receding into the past. Can something like this ever be more than a fleeting glimpse? You read his response. You, you were free of time of, for a moment. You moved into the now and therefore perceived the tree without the screen of mind. The awareness of being became a part of your perception. So this is powerful. The awareness of being became a part of their perception. When they noticed the tree in the now, in the moment, it was the live, living thing. Trees are alive. The earth is alive, right? All of existence. There's energy. The same energy that flows through us flows through everything. That tree that you look at is alive in that moment. When it stops to lose, when you stop to lose that connection with it, is when you allow the pain body or the egoic mind to take over and you start to lose sight of the present moment you're in and drift off into the past or the present. Oh, I'm, like, I'm really sad because I lost that thing. You know, I'm looking at this tree. I see the tree presently now. It's beautiful. I'm a part of it. It's aware, I'm aware of its living essence. And then I think about that. Maybe that sales call that didn't work out. Or, man, I, I flunked that test. You know, I, that's still on my mind. Or, or, man, you know, I can't, you know, I can't wait till I get home to play video games. Like, that's going to make me happy, right? 
all those all of those random thoughts remember we're thinking constantly all these random things that come through our mind we're picking up so much constantly all those distractions pull us out of the now And in today's society, in modern society, it's even worse because we're consistently bombarded. That means we're consistently being hit with all these distractions from ads, right? From, from commercials and, and from billboards and from, you know, the next new thing, the next new widget for us to get a hold of. Or, or I got to get the same thing as that person because that person just did something. And that, they call that keeping up with the Joneses. We are distracted consistently from the now. And this is why it's important that as you read on and you learn about this, you start to see the red flags, right? You start to see the things. Like I told you about this morning with when Carlo, I was talking to him. And while I was talking, he's like, oh, and then what are we going to do? What are we going to do after that, right? He's excited. I get it. But that was the ego. He was asking because he wanted the sense and feeling of happiness from what he believed he should get in the future because that would bring him happiness. You know, he wants me to say, oh, we're going to go play games or we're going to do, you know what I mean? We're going to do this. And that would give him excitement and joy. And the ego living in the future wants to feed off of that joy that is fleeting. Remember, true happiness comes from within. So being in the now, you're listening, you're catch, capturing the essence, just like they're capturing the essence of the tree, you're capturing the essence of what we're a part of. Our single conversation in the present moment is so powerful and beautiful. To allow the ego to step in, we lose sight of that moment and we drift off into the distractions of everything bombarding us. Please continue. Read this, uh, the rest of that paragraph and then... Yeah, go get a drink. Uh, where am I? Within the just timeless start, start this paragraph. Read this whole paragraph. You were free of time for a moment. You moved into the now and therefore perceived the tree without the screen of mind. The awareness of being became part of your pre perception mm, shun. With the timeless dimension comes a different kind of knowing, one, uh, one that does not kill the spirit that lives within every creature and everything, no, everything. A knowing that does not destroy sacredness and mystery of life but contains a deep love and revenge revengeance reverence reverence for all that is for all that is a knowing of which the mind knows nothing beautiful 